Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to replace Redux for small and medium sized projects that don't need all the middleware, but just a global state container. So for example, I've already prepared something, which is a little app right here that has the ability to increase, decrease, or add 10 to each one of these values, which are basically an array. And we also have a selected value, which you can see in the code right here. It's basically two pieces of state and both of which are going to be turned into yeah, basically a dispatchable global state container like you'd have in Redux. So let's take a look at how to do this. To get started, let's take a look at what we actually have. We have three functions, increase, decrease, and set. And these are going to be what our dispatches in a few minutes are going to do. And here we got our basic code. Not much of this is going to change, of course. We basically just join the values to display them nicely. And then we have these buttons to select everything. Now to get started, let's move this code up globally. So to do that, we're going to create a new file called state provider dot jsx or js if you're using create react app and then we're going to start by basically creating a function and that function is going to be called state provider it's not going to get any props quite yet maybe it will in the future who knows and that is just going to return nothing for now because to use it we're going to need to, first of all, import React from React. Like that. And then we're going to need to create a context which basically defines what things you can import from your state provider. In this case, we are going to say const state context equals react.create context. Basically, everything inside of this context will be Able, we'll be able to import in any component in our app, independently if it's one layer beneath this or 100 layer, which is going to make things a lot easier. For now, we're just going to make this an object because we will start by now saying state context dot provider, because it basically gives us a component right out of the box, which will make things easier as well. And now we can also add props to this because you basically need to wrap the state provider around all of your other components, so around the whole app. And to do that, you're of course going to need to say, okay, every child in here will be a child of the state context provider. Now let's just format this nicely. And that looks a lot better already. And now there's just one thing missing, which is saying values equals our empty object. And now you could import nothing, which of course is too little, but we can just take this out of our app now. This is going to create a lot of errors, of course, but we're going to fix those right away by saying this. And now we can just say, okay, our on text is going to start off by having a values array, which is going to start off as an empty array, just so it doesn't create any bugs, a set values function. We're just going to start off as an empty arrow function that does nothing. You could also say this is null. It always depends on what you want to do with it. Most of the time, both things will work though. Then selected is going to be null as well. You could set this to the default value of zero if you wanted to. I'm going to set it to null for now. And then set selected is going to be equal to null as well. Values could null too, but that might create like null pointer issues, which we don't want. So this would be fine. And now in our values, we can just say, okay, values, set values, selected and set selected. Adding these things to the object like this is basically the same as saying values, colon values. But because this is repetitive, we're just going to do it like that. And now we basically only need to export both the state context and the function. And then we can actually import them in our app. But before we do that, we're going to need to make sure that our app has this state provider wrapped around it. So state provider. Because if it doesn't, then it can't use the things inside the state provider, which are our two states right here, which we want to use because otherwise our app is not going to work. And now in here, we can just say, okay, const we're going to leave this empty for now, equals use context, state context. Now we basically have access to all of this, so values, 
set values selected and set selected and as you can see if we just reload and check what's up then there should use status not defined oh yeah one small mistake of course import react comma use state inside of our provider because otherwise it's not gonna work and now we got our app again oh wait there's one thing missing which is the values because i did a typo this is called value not values and now if we reload then everything is working right perfect now we can say plus 10 select the other one say minus one select the other one add one and everything's working again so basically we already got some global state management now but we of course want the dispatch functionality or we might want it if not then yeah this is already great for you right but most of the time you actually want this patches especially for like arrays and even more for objects so let's take a look at how we can do that we're gonna start off by creating a new file which is called state reducer dot js not jsx in this code because this is not going to create uh, not going to contain any components so we're going to say export function state reducer and that state reducer is going to get the current state and an action i'm going to get into why that is shortly the state is basically going to be manipulated in here and then returned to update it and the action yeah you're going to see that right away for now we're just going to say it returns the state so we basically now have a state reducer that does nothing now we can already use it in here so const this equals use reducer so the reducer is first of all going to need the reducer which is called state reducer and then it's going to need the initial state in our case this is going to look like the following the values is our array from up here and selected gonna be our zero and as you can see this basically mirrors this but in one object and yeah this is basically going to be the first state that's going to be passed into our reducer and here we basically get our value and uh, this hatch function right you could also call the state of course which most of the time is easier but yeah we'll just call it state of as well so that it matches our state reducer so now let's move on by actually defining how this reducer is going to work we're going to start by basically creating an enum of actions you can take so const actions and these actions are basically what we can execute on our reducer so one function we need is we need to increase our state to do that we will just write that like this it's basically just going to give us autocomplete. You could also just use um, the strings when we are ready to do that. It's basically the same as in as you'd know it in Redux, if you know Redux. Decrease. And lastly, we need set. So these are going to be all the functions we have in our app right now. Increase, decrease, set. But we need one more, which is select. Because we also have the selected item in here, or the selected item id so we need to be able to select our state as well and now this basically couldn't be easier so we're going to create a switch case for action and this actions thingy right here one of these is going to be in the type object for our action so we're going to make a switch case for the type and we're going to say case actions dot increase as you can see the autocomplete works really well so that's why i use it and in all cases, we're just going to return the state for now, just so this is nice and tidy. Normally, you'd also set a default here, but we, because we always will return something, this isn't necessary right now. Now, let's take a look at how to actually implement this before we add the logic in here. So, we're going to go back into our state provider, and we're basically going to say, okay, dispatch set. We're going to start with set for now. So, this is going to be a function that we define. Function, dispatch set. It's going to take in a value because we need to define what we want to set as you can see right here for example set x in our currently running app we'll set it to values selected plus 10 to increase the value by 10. so now we need to define this function so 
This is gonna run our dispatch from a user reducer hook and the dispatch will basically take an object. So this is gonna be what is gonna be passed into our action in the state reducer right here. And here we're gonna say, okay, our type is actions.set and we also need to define a so-called payload and that payload is just gonna contain a value and that value is n. And now we can basically already run this, but we are gonna define the other dispatches real quick as well. And for the decrement and increment, we actually don't need a number because we always increase and decrease by one. So let's just do this real quick. And now everything looks as it should. Now we can basically add these to our exported um, context because we will, these will basically be the way we are gonna use to run the dispatches so this dispatch function basically and this reducer outside of the provider and to do that we will just be able to import dispatch set dispatch ink dispatch deck and dispatch select and now we of course also need to say okay i want to have dispatch set here dispatch ink dispatch deck and dispatch select you of course don't need to put them in an order, but it's always nice to do that so that it's easier to find them if you want to remove them, for example. And now we can basically start to change our reducer to actually do what we wanted. To do. We of course don't want to change the state, but we uh, to return state, but we want to return change state. So because this is an error, we can just use the map function. So here we got our value. And for each value, we first of all want to check if it's indexed. So value and the index of it is the selected index. So index equals state dot selected. As you remember in our state provider, we pass that in right here. So by default zero selected. And we're gonna put this in a new row to make it easier to read. So this is basically gonna be an error function. And we're gonna make this a ternary expression. So for now we can basically just say this. So state that values, sorry, we want to change this value. So state that values that map. If the index of our value is equal to the selected index, then we want to increase it. So value plus one. We can put this into uh, in multiple rows as well, just so it's easier to read like that and now we basically say okay we map over all the values and if we find the index that is selected we increase the value otherwise we return the value and now because we don't want to throw away the rest of our state we're going to need to do one more thing which is say okay this is what the values state is going to look like and we're just going to indent this one more uh, time and the rest of the state is just going to stay the same. So we're going to use this three dot operator to basically keep the state. So basically take all of the state and override values with the result of this map function right here. And this is basically the way we're going to manipulate state every time. So here for a decrease, this is going to look basically the same, but just with minus one in here. For our set, it's going to be a bit more interesting because we don't just have the index and state.selected, but also we will not set value to value plus something, but to our action dot payload dot, I think it's called value, right? Let's just make sure. Dispatch set, right? Value and this is set to n, which is going to be the function we set in dispatch set. And now if we look into our reducer, there's just one thing missing, which is the select. And the select couldn't be easier because we basically keep all the state and say, okay, selected is equal to action.payload.value. This is much easier to understand than this, I know. But yeah, basically this map will return a new array and that array is slightly manipulated by changing one value. And now, we already exported in our provider, as you remember, right here. So the last thing we need to do is remove this values bit right here and say, okay, values is equal to state.values. Selected is equal to state.selected. And if we now just change our app a bit, 
by basically using these dispatch functions instead of the things we're using right now. So basically, we're going to format this a bit, first of all. So we're going to do that so that it's easier to read. And then we can just say, okay, we don't need a set values function anymore. We don't need a set selected function anymore. But what we do need is a dispatch deck, dispatch inc, dispatch select, and a dispatch set. And now that all of these are imported, we can basically get rid of our functions in here as well because we aren't using them anymore. And now we can basically say, okay, instead of ink, we use dispatch ink. Here we use dispatch deck. Here we will use dispatch set. Same way as before. Values selected plus 10. And then we basically only miss our dispatch select. We're just going to run in here. And now everything should still be working. But none of our state is actually contained inside this context. We actually don't need any new states anymore. So these can go as well. And we're basically only using the reducer and the dispatches. So it's basically just like Redux. If we now check into our app, then everything should hopefully be working. So plus 10 increases the first value. Let's just select the first value again, just to make sure. Okay, there something seems to have gone wrong because n is not defined. So let's check back at why n is not defined. We uh, added payload value n in here because I copied and pasted this. So this is of course not going to be needed for a dispatch because we always change the value by one. So let's just go back here reload and now we can select something increase and decrease the value by both 1 and 10 and yeah everything is working just as intended so what we've basically done here is use a combination of a provider and a reducer to globalize our state into a global state container just like in redux and yeah you're of course not going to use this every time many times redux middleware options and logging and all that stuff are just too good to be left on the table by using this. But Redux also has a bit of a performance hit. And for many apps, it's just overkill. So if you have a small or middle sized app, then I could actually recommend using this. I actually have some experience using it, and I can tell you that it's actually quite nice to use. Sure, doing it like this with values and selected might not be the smartest way to do it, but you could also add some state in here if you wanted to. Basically, just a way to globalize your state, which is quite nice in my opinion.